All right, here we go with another <clears throat> video. This one is made on a different day from the ones previously, the first four or five that I made. Um, anyway, this one is about the Momentum and Impulse Labs, um, which is a two-part lab. Uh, one part is about momentum and the other part is about impulse. Um, so the momentum part requires two carts. The impulse part is one cart. I'm gonna start with the impulse portion of the lab. Um, there's a few things you're going to need. You will need these uh, force acceleration, force and acceleration sensors, um, which can go on top of the cart, and I'll show you how they attach in just a minute. Uh, but there's two different versions. This one here is the one that's in the physics room right now, and there are six of these. These are nice because they are uh, Bluetooth, but that's also kind of a problem because sometimes the Bluetooth doesn't work quite right. Um, also, they can be charged up, but they can also just be plugged in if their charger is not, um, like if they're not charged up. You can just plug them in uh, using a USB. So I'll just show you what it looks like inside the box. Um, so the box opens like that you know, with the little tabs that, that go into the side there. And then inside you can see there are some, there's some equipment in here. Um, and then there is a USB cord. So the USB cord can be plugged into the computer for charging purposes. Um, I don't think that it can communicate through the USB cord, though I could be wrong about that. Um, I don't remember for sure if you can use the USB cord to connect it. Uh, what I am pretty sure about, and I haven't really had time to check on this, uh, so I'm going on memory. I'm fairly sure that this, um, I need that out anyway. I'm fairly sure that this thing uh, communicates with a different program on the laptop. It's not the Logger Pro. It is called Graphical Analysis. Um, and that one should also be on every laptop. Uh, anyway, if you wind up having like huge issues with these guys, there is a different, older version of the Force Probe. Um, I'm not sure how many of these we still have that are working, but it looks like this. Uh, for You have to choose the correct setting on top, whether it's 10 newtons or 50 newtons. Um, but this one hooks up to the, um, the Lab Pro, right? This guy over here. Um, just like all the other sensors, it hooks up there, um, and okay, I got interrupted by a student coming in. I don't remember exactly what I was saying, but I think I was talking about this guy, and he hooks up to the Lab Pro and uses Logger Pro and everything like that. Um, I think I only have like one of these in this room that works correctly. The others of these are in the chemistry room in uh, upper cabinet. Um, that's room L4, that direction, right? So in one of the cabinets that's kind of in the back of the room. Actually, let's just walk over there really quick. So if you happen to need those other force probes, uh, because for whatever reason you can't get the Bluetooth ones to work, then the other force probes are here. Right, so this is the chemistry room. Up here in this cabinet, there are some other things. Um, and that's not where they are, actually. Where are they? Uh, well, there's, there's some there. Dual range force sensors are there. Um, motion detectors, apparently. That's good to know. I don't think I knew that we had these here. Um, yeah, so if you end up needing some more motion detectors, apparently they are right there. Uh, yeah, so come over here and look for stuff if you need it. Um, there are also some things like sort of out on counters. Uh, there's one that says it's a motion detector right there. Um, pH stuff. Anyway, back to the other thing. 
there's also more lab pros right here, which is in the science prep area. Okay, back in the room. Um, here we are with the Bluetooth force probe. Um, you can see there's a hole through the middle up here, and that's very important. Um, other things in the thing in the box include like a hook. There's a hook attachment, which is useful for other um, experiments where you have to measure force. Um, and then, of course, there's the cord. Um, okay. Things you need for this lab are everything that I just showed you. You also need this hoop, which there are six of those in bubble wraps. Um, and uh, you want to kind of tighten it, tighten this black thing down so it's right up against this part here. So you want to make sure that that's nice and tight right there. And then the other side, you can tighten it up to this. So it would go in place of this bumper right here. So the bumper can come off. And then the, the sorry, the like the rubber stopper, I guess you should call it. Um, and then you would just twist this on a bit. You don't want to twist this all the way on. That screw is too long, and I think it might damage some things inside the force probe. So just screw it on a bit, and then you can use this second plastic thing to tighten it, right? So you can tighten that down like this. Okay, and then there you go. Bumper. So hoop bumper and rubber stopper bumper. So you need both of those for this lab. Um, another thing you need, you've got this, I've got this bag of metal posts that attach to the top of these carts, and I'll show you how that works. Um, I keep these in a box, one of those big white boxes that says it's just extra stuff, like uh, cart masses and extra things. Okay, so how does this attach? This attaches here, all right, it goes like this bolt on the end, this, this thing goes through here, um, through that wider part, and then you slide it over, and then you just twist it, right? So twist it down, it locks in place, okay? Um, probably you'll want that, I mean, you'll have to figure out exactly where to position this based on the force probe, right? So we're going to... Move the force probe so it's positioned right at the front of the cart. This will be especially important with the bumper because the bumper is not nearly as long as this hoop. So this little rubber stopper, right, that's not that long. So this needs to be way up at the front of the cart so that the stopper is out in front. And the stopper has to be the thing that actually hits the wall. Okay, not wall, but the little, I'll show you that in a minute as well. All right, so that's the setup for the cart for this lab. Okay, so that's going to go there, like that, and then you'll have to raise the other end of the track. Now down here, we have the, um, this block, this wooden block, and this thing that we previously were using to attach the motion detector onto this, um, but now we're using it for a block. Now, the block has a screw and a washer. And that's going through that open section, right? So what we're using is this guy, right? This is the thing that's being used here. And we're putting, instead of putting a motion detector through that open spot, we're going to use this block with a screw in it. Um, so you'll need to get a screwdriver from, the, uh, from back there. Just around the corner, there is a drawer that has screwdrivers in it, um, and then you're going to attach this. Now I've got a um, here, so I've got a a bin with five more of those blocks. All of them have screws in the end, so you'll just have to take the screw out of the block, put the screw through that little gap there, and then tighten it down like this, all right? It took me several years of doing this lab to figure this setup out, to figure out this setup. It is the best way to do this by far. So um, you really should do it this way. 
I apologize this video is so long, but this lab is one of the most complicated ones to set up and to execute, so bear with me. Um, okay, so, yeah, this, this goes through the end here, like that, and then underneath you have the, uh, underneath you have the, the little screw thing and you just tighten it with that, okay? And then that makes this nice and super tight, and that's the way you want it to be for a cart rolling down the track and bumping into it, right? And actually, I did not properly tighten up something else, right? So order of operations here. So you need to tighten down this metal post as tight as possible before you then um, tighten the this thing down here at the end. Tighten that second. This first, this second. All right, and then um, this is going to roll down the hill, bonk, and so on. Um, some of these hoops are looser than others, so some of your students might need to drop from a shorter distance. Also depends on how steep you make this ramp, right? So it's going to be raised at that end. Right now it's not. Could just use books to raise that end of the thing. And then it rolls down, bumps, and you're gonna get data on your computer from that bump. You'll get force data, okay? Um, same thing with the, with the other bumper. All right, so that's how that works. Um, I'm gonna pause this while I get things ready to explain the other part of the lab. <laughs>